It's a place where mates meet, drinks are drunk, and friendships are forged. There are over 6,000 pubs in Australia, and today, we're at one of them, the Duke of Brunswick Hotel in the Adelaide CBD. We're gonna catch up with the publican, meet some of the locals, and find out what makes this pub so great. I'm John O'Hart, welcome to Great Aussie Pubs. I'm here with Simone Douglas. She is the publican of the Duke of Brunswick Hotel, which as far as I'm concerned, the greatest Aussie pub so far on the journey. And Duke of Brunswick, you can find it in the Adelaide CBD um, on Gilbert Street. How are you going, Simone? I'm pretty good. You must be very proud of your pub. I, I am more than a little bit proud of my pub, it's true, but I'm very proud of the team and the family that we've built in the process of making it what it is. I actually had the Facebook memories come up yesterday um, where I just started telling people that we were about to take it over three years ago yesterday, so. Wow, three years? Yeah. And how have you gone about building what you have done, which is a team and you often, you say it's a family as well. Yeah, so um, we did it by breaking all the rules uh, around what is meant to make a pub profitable or successful or um, anything that I was taught in pretty much my 20 years of hospitality, I kind of threw out the window because I could. Uh, and instead what we did was we set about creating a place where the outside world really didn't matter. So a place of belonging, a place where we were really happy to see our customers, every single staff member, you always get greeted the minute that you come in the door. Everyone always says goodbye to you when you walk out the door. There's not that sense of walking in and being judged. Instead we managed to create a space where you walk in and the rest of the world falls away, which is really special. 
And that's really something that we need right now. You know, COVID-19 has hit um, people suffering depression, yeah. people suffering all sorts of mental health stuff. So just going back to that, people suffering, you know, depression, and they, 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 they come to a pub where they're treated like people. Yeah, like human beings, I think. So I think that um, the most important thing and the thing that we really work on is embracing people who are maybe not embraced in other places or not understood. So there's a difference, I think, in business in terms of opening doors going, you know, every pub will say, we're happy to take all of the people in that want to come into our venue and give us money, that's great. Um, and that's true, but what we've done is gone out of our way to learn more about, you know, the different aspects of the society that we find ourselves in. So, you know, we've started working towards getting veteran-friendly status as a venue, which is something that doesn't actually exist. Uh, but what that's involved is, you know, having Heroes on the Home Front, uh, Luke who founded that charity, come in and run training for all of my staff members on veterans issues, post-traumatic stress disorder and assistance dog etiquette so that it's not paying lip service that we can actually support uh, veterans who are part of our um, Duke of Brunswick family and regularly come in so that they know that they're in a place where they're not judged, they're not stared at, it's not a big deal, they just get to come into their second home. Uh, and likewise, you know, we've done something very similar with Deaf Can Do. So all of my staff front of house are trained in conversational Auslan so that they can speak to our deaf patrons in their first language. I think there's something that's often forgotten is that it is a language in and of itself. Uh, and, you know, it's always amazingly welcoming to be communicated within the language that you speak. Mm. So just like if we go overseas, and we're in a different country and we walk in and someone speaks to us in English, we feel safer, we feel more included and like we can access the information that we need to. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise, when our deaf patrons come in and we can ask them questions and communicate in what is very basic Auslan for us, we're not as fluent as they are because it's our second language and their first language, mm -hmm. um, but it makes a difference in terms of the environment. That is awesome and that is such a big step that you've taken, I mean you've gone one level and you keep going yeah. up. So, you know, some pub owners that might not necessarily share the same ethos yeah. at the moment, um, how could, what could be the first step to creating an inclusive pub? Oh, look, the, the first step is creating an inclusive culture within your team, I think. And so, you know, uh, it's about taking the time out to actually look at what your culture even is. So often what happens is, we have a venue, we open the doors, we sell people a product, and you know that's where we focus. We focus is our pricing right? Do we have a good product mix? But you know, the importance is to focus on what is the environment that we're creating for our staff? Do they feel like they're at home? Do they feel like they have a voice and that they're heard? And then who are the different segments of our community that come into our venue and what do we actually know about them? How can we make them feel more welcome? more included, you know, and it's it can be really, really simple things, like I have the bare men of Adelaide have been coming here since 2014, so long before we had um, the venue, and for those of you who might not understand, that's men, who like very large, hairy men, I think I've got that vernacular right, but you know, when we first took over the pub, they were like, oh, can we still come here? And I said, do you drink alcohol? And they're like, oh, yes. I said, are you going to pay me money, or do you want me to pay you money? And they're like, no, no, we're going to pay you money. Like, we'll buy drinks over the bar, so there are lots of you. They're like, yeah, I'm like, of course, you can bloody still come into the pub. Like, it's, you know, but I had one of um, the gentlemen who's a, who's a member of the Bearmen um, who said to me the other day, he goes, it's really nice to walk into a pub where nobody stops and stares at you. Mm. And that I think that's the difference too. It's the same for women who walk into the hotel. It's not a question of having a whole heap of men sat at the bar that all turn around and stare at you. What are you doing walking into my pub? Mm. Like even the locals here will turn around and go, oh, hi, come on in. You know, like if the staff are busy and can't say hello, the locals have been trained. Mm. You know, because it's an inclusive culture where everyone's part of the family. Yeah. Now, creating that family, you mentioned there that, that there are there are attributes that staff have to have. Yeah. And you told me in the past that there are four. There are four. You you just, on the are you allowed to tell me? Is this a secret? Or I mean, well, people can work it out for themselves perhaps. They, well, they can, they can work it out for themselves. And I think um, with the four attributes that every staff member has to have, um, our staff came up with what those were. 
And so it's that question. So uh, one of them was that they needed to be professional, mm. they needed to hold themselves accountable, uh, they needed to be friendly, and they needed to genuinely care. And yeah. I think, you know, it's that genuine care that's the big thing that really stands out more than anything else. Yeah, that's perfect. And, you know, um, that should really be um, a staple of being professional anyway. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, if you talk to Alex, my uh, partner, he's very big on, you know, all we're really doing is old school hospitality. The sad thing is that this old school hospitality, making everyone welcome and actually caring about who comes into your venue, is considered now radical hospitality. So we actually, um, there's a professor who wrote a book called Radical Hospitality, and we have a whole chapter in that book about the Duke of Brunswick and what we've done, because it's considered radical now, as opposed to just... Good yeah. Well, let me put you on this one. Um, is it integrity or ethics over profits? Because what I see you created here is, uh, well, you're, you're a publican that's ethically um, driven. Mm -hmm. Now, pubs will often go into the game, or publicans will often go into the game simply for the money, yeah. rather than the community. Yeah, that's true. I, I think, um, you know, not a business owner if you don't want to make a profit that's true but um, what we've created here is a place where you lead with your ethics first and you don't compromise on those so you can do whatever it is that you want to do to make a profitable venue so long as it lines up with your ethics about who you are as an individual so you know like things like the fact that we're 100 percent gluten free um, you know, if someone, if I'd suggested to another pub, in fact, I did when I worked for another pub company, suggest that we should go 100% gluten for a long time ago. They told me I was mad. Mm. And then, you know, like what we did, it like supercharged our business. Like we went from mm. doing 350 meals a week to 1,000 meals a week. Mm. Um, now that was driven around wanting to be inclusive for people with celiac disease and give them a safe place mm. to eat. Um, it's a bonus that mm. it's made my business very profitable, but mm. it's profit, um, not profit by deliberate design, it's profit as a side effect of being a good human being. I think that's that's a new way of doing business that more people are discovering, but it's still um, a bit foreign to a lot of people. Mm. One thing that you did that's probably foreign to almost every pub in Australia is that you put change tables in the men's uh, restrooms. I did. I did put change tables in the men's restrooms and that seemed like logic and common sense to me. Mm. Um, and it was fascinating. So like, we, we're we getting more families coming in because we've gone gluten free. So we went, well, we need to put change tables in the toilets. This is, we have babies now and things. Mm. Um, we have room in both the toilets, the men's and the women's, so we bought two change tables. So we took a photo and it put it on Facebook. Mm. And it went viral. It went in front of 70,000 people in about 12 hours, which just goes to show dads are sick and tired of having to change their kids on the floor, mm. in the back seat of their car, mm. like in all of these other places. And, and mums really value the opportunity to sit down and continue their drink because dads are parents too. Mm. Yes, yes we are. This is Simone Douglas from the Duke of Brunswick Hotel. Drop in, say good day, meet the staff. They'll say good day and they'll say goodbye. Come and drop in for some conscious drinking at a great Aussie pub. Okay, we're at the Duke of Brunswick Hotel. I'm here with Diane and Hook, the dog. This is a dog-friendly pub. And uh, you're a local. Yes, I am a local. This is your favourite pub, sorry. Yes, it is, and I live straight down the street behind us. How often are you here? Uh, maybe too often, but it's okay. <laughs> it's allowed because this is a community pub. This is a, a dog-friendly pub, and yeah, you'll get your turn. And, uh, and most of all, it's 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 a family pub because you feel like family. Is that how you feel? Yes, I do. That's why I come. I feel like I can walk in as a single woman and not feel intimidated. Just walk in and everyone says hello. And yeah, there's lots of people here you can talk to. Yeah. And what do you have to say about that? There we go. Uh, that's great. That's, that's Diane and Hook. Uh, and Hook stole the show. Off camera, oh, yeah. it's all going to be okay. He's still alive. Still in hand to get back up, <laughs> it's all right. There, there he goes. Go.
We're just going to keep rolling because that's what we do. Um, as long as you're in one piece, though. Yeah. <laughs> he's alive. Should we yeah. restart? No, we won't restart. So maybe had to cut it. Yeah, we've got to cut it all off. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. so just going back to that, people suffering.